Hey guys, it's JM. So we have the first build of the Chia client in alpha that is able to farm compressed plots. Chia uh, Bladebit CUDA has been in alpha for about a month now. Uh, it's very stable on Linux, still working on Windows and some other operating systems. Of course, you know, right now the requirements are pretty high. You need 256 gigabytes of DRAM and an NVIDIA GPU with eight gigabytes of uh, VRAM. But you know, pretty soon we'll have be able to make these compressed plots with Bladebit Disk and other kind of low-end systems as well. So the the farming is really important today. I just want to kind of cover some really high-level concepts like effective capacity, which I've already seen quite a bit of confusion on in the community, <laughs> and uh, hopefully you know we'll be able to um, you know, go through a couple examples of my own that will start to make a little bit of sense. So here you can see um, this is my development system. I have a slash mount slash SSD that has 40 terabytes on here. If I do an ls slash mount slash SSD, you'll see I have a bunch of C7 plots. Uh, so a C7 plot for Chia is 79 GIB. If we want to do it just a dash L, you can see it's about 83.7 uh, gigabytes. When I wrote the compression blog post, I actually had a link to this plot compression TCO public, and there's a lot of good information in here. Um, first, I made this TCO spreadsheet, which is kind of the most important thing. There's a Gigahorse one you can compare Chia uh, Bladebit versus Gigahorse for the compressed plots. There's plotting power, compute Bladebit, compute Gigahorse. I've just done some measurements on my Ice Lake systems, uh, but you know, I'll show you how to run a simulator in a later video uh, where you can actually kind of look up what the, the right amount of plots you can farm on a given system is. But uh, so for the first off, when you when you go to this spreadsheet, you know, make a copy of your own. You know, you'll be make a copy. It'll say, you know, warning this app script. Uh, you know, I use a little script that uh, basically grabs the net space uh, from XCA scan. So we'll see if this comes over on a copy. If not, then we will have to. Okay, good. So uh, it pops up here. Okay, so now that I have a copy, um, in this scenario, I remember, uh, you know, I am farming, you know, 40 terabytes. So this is not going to be very much. And um, I watched per terabyte. You know, if you had, um, you know, 18 terabyte hard drives, you know, farming on with harvesters and all that stuff, you know, you'd probably be around 4.4 to 0.5 uh, watts per terabyte. You're just going to have to take the power of your whole farm and measure by the number, you know, divided by the number of terabytes and you can have this watt per terabyte. Uh, and then your cost per terabyte raw, just how much you paid on average for the terabytes. And then your cost per kilowatt hour of electricity. These are the constants you have to kind of put in there. Um, the XCH price as of today, I think we're around $39 or something like that. So I, yeah, eventually I'll get a way to get all that filled in automatically as well. I, the uh, APIs weren't very nice when I tried to uh, put the APIs into uh, Google Sheets. It wanted me to pay for the APIs. So, uh, so okay, so this is the most important things, right? It's a, a plot, C0 plot today is 101.3 GIB and 108.8 uh, gigabytes. So if you just move even just to level one, you're reducing that by 13.61%. So the actually amount of rewards, so again, this is a 13.6% per, reduction. The actual increase in is this percent change reward. So basically you're just looking at this rewards per day in XCH, and here you know we can kind of expand this out. You can see here, as we move down the compression levels, you're getting more rewards because you're, you're basically storing more plots on the same amount of space. So you're getting more rewards. So this percent goes up. Uh, this is also the same as your percent increase. So if you look at all the way to C7, you have a 22.97% or 23% reduction in plot size, but you're also getting a almost 30% change in rewards. So what happens is in, in, my, in this scenario, you can see uh, basically I have my 40 terabytes that I put in here raw it's going to automatically calculate my effective capacity. So at C1, this would be effectively a pool or any other, uh, or the blockchain would basically assume that I had 46 terabytes effective. If I go all the way to C7, I have 51.9 terabytes of effective capacity. I'm getting that off my raw 40 terabytes. So I'm getting space for free because I'm compressing the space. I'm fitting more plots, uh, fitting more plots on that same amount of raw capacity. Uh, but there is no free lunch. Obviously, it takes power to decompress. So the way I would properly do this for my 40 terabytes, I would measure, okay, what's the CPU overhead? Uh, you know, in, in Linux, I could probably do this with, uh, you know, sensors. Um, you can do sudo lm, uh, install lm sensors. And if you have a server, uh, this is a pretty nice way to do it. But you can do, um, you can just do sensors. 
and on a server it'll actually give you the power measurement and you can run a power you know with on average uh, without um you know on baseline with the default and you can kind of look at it when you're plotting or farming and kind of look at the power difference now, another way to do this is through basically grafana and in node exporter if you go in here to node exporter and if you have this running check out my other videos of how to run node exporter uh, but you can see here um, hardware temperature monitor thermal throttle and so you see power supply doesn't actually have any data in here but uh, if you actually go in here and this is maybe not the best way to do it i'll just add an, an add a new one here uh, but if you go in here and add a panel and you can say power, average power, watt, run query, you can see now I have my power, I can label it, whatever, whatever I want. Um, uh, I can name, name it, uh, power and I can go over here and say values. So you guys can't see that here. Uh, values and uh, that's fine. We want, we could probably want uh, mean and max, and then down here where it says options, unit, power, or uh, watt. Let's see what it says. Watt, energy watt. Uh, so energy is actually kilowatt hours or or joules. Uh, watt is actually a metric of power. So silly. Silly node exporter. Okay, so you can see here um, my power mean over the last whatever. This is ice like server. You know, again, you would probably not be. Uh, this is my, one of my plotters. I'm just doing this test on here, but you can use something like this to basically determine, you know, where and when you're harvesting, um, what the difference in power is, and why do you need that? Okay, because there's a trade-off. There's no free lunch. You're getting this extra space, but there's a little bit extra power in CPU cycle to decompress the data. So in, in my scenario, maybe there's a 50 watt overhead or something like that. Uh, but now the spreadsheet automatically calculates everything. It goes in, goes through here and it calculates your CapEx per terabyte effective. So again, you know, even though we bought the storage for $10 per terabyte, we're actually, if you divide it by now that same amount of money, if you divide it by 51.9 terabytes, because that's how much effective space we're getting after compression, it lowers your CapEx per terabyte effective. And then your OpEx per terabyte effective is just how much power it takes to actually run run your hardware um, this is this is the overhead that you, you're getting from this you know how much watt overhead comes from the extra decompression of the farming and so if you look at now here uh, yeah my TCO is going to be higher because I'm spending more power uh, but you can see your profit per month will change now see if you can see here I'm only farming 40 terabytes here so it's not a big difference but say I'm farming 500 terabytes and it's only 50 extra watts now all of a sudden my profit per month on c7 looks much higher my tco is much lower so the, the spreadsheet is there to help you just pop in your values and model and simulate a bunch of stuff so this is just my test obviously you know uh if you were farming 40 terabytes of c7 on an ice lake server that <laughs> takes 400 watts that would be stupid but you could you could farm it on you know desktop and that might make a lot more sense uh, but here you can see my actual percent change in tco is um, 22.25 percent less than the baseline. So uh, my rewards per month, again, my per change in actual raw rewards from Chia are actually 30 percent higher. So I'm trading off power for extra rewards, and your profit per month this will automatically calculate. So you can see actually in this little scenario that I put just some made up made up numbers for power. Um, this would actually tell me you know that C7 uh, C1 on 40 terabytes is actually going to be my most profitable scenario. Now, again, this is kind of a silly scenario because I, I just have, um, you know, I'm, I'm, this is not a real farmer. This is just kind of my test system, but you can use this model to basically figure out what the right range of compression is going to be most profitable for your farm. Uh, and again, this is going to take some simulation of understanding how many plots you can farm at a certain sea level on your farm. This is going to take uh, kind of measuring some power, you know, doing a little bit of uh, sleuthing to figure this out. So if you haven't watched my video about installing the Chia Exporter dashboard you should, in Chia Grafana dashboard, you should do that because it's very important for farming compressed plots because there's some really, really important metrics that you need to know uh, for farming compressed plots. One, you need to know that plots are passing the signage point. You need to know the total size of your plots. Uh, actually, I think I screwed up here earlier. I told you it was 40 terabytes. Um, Duff is actually reporting TIB. So um, if I go do uh, DF, you can see here my amount SSD is about 43, 
terabytes. This is, I think, kilobytes. So I have to do that times uh, uh, 1024 for bytes. Uh, so uh, here we go. Um, you know, so I have, you know, I uh, I prefer terabytes. If you want to do t tibby bytes, be my guest. Uh, I I think in terabytes because that's how you buy hard drives. <laughs> you buy hard drives by the terabyte and dollar per terabyte. So, um, but here the really important thing is this harvester lookup time. Now, in a not compressed build, this should be extremely low, right? If your harvester is working properly, it should be just like absolutely nothing. But now the latency of decompressing the plot is included in this harvester lookup time. And if you basically go in here, and I'll blow this up so we can uh, take a look at it and move it over here so you guys can actually see it. Uh, so the harvester lookup time is extremely important, right? This is, um, as you go up the sea level, the proofs take longer to decompress. And the most of the time you're getting proof quality checks, which are just basically if a plot passes a filter, then you have to do a proof quality check and uh, the proof quality check is a little bit lighter weight. You don't have to do as, as much calculation as you have to do for a full proof of space. But every time you get a partial from the pool, in my case, I'm on space pool, and uh, you can see here this harvester Chia total proofs found, um, delta is 40, 40 in the last whatever, two hours or whatever. I'm getting about 550 partials per day on space pool. So I'm getting every one Qual proof quality check every signage point, so every 9.375 seconds, that's uh, whatever, 4,608 4, times two, so 92, 16 uh, proof quality checks per day, plus 550 full proofs of space lookups for the partials. And then that is what these com spikes are. These are these decompression events. So if you look at um, what these harvester latency outliers, these six seconds, whatever, I have this set to five seconds because that's kind of what we have in the Chia uh, chick client as a warning. Really, it's now about eight seconds uh, because you don't want to be overwhelming the CPU where you can't look up uh, more proof quality checks, you know, before the next signage point hits. But uh, now this dashboard will tell you the max time it took to do a proof uh, quality check, the mean time, which is your average, and your standard deviation. So you can use this to basically determine how far can you push your farmer before it starts breaking at a certain sea level. Now, we'll show you later with the simulator how all this, you can simulate all this and, and kind of figure out uh, what the worst case will be. But right now, um, you know, the best way to actually measure this is just empirically, you know. Um, and again, obviously people can't like empirically test out hundreds of terabytes, but you know, doing small tests will give you uh, some intuition for how this works. But again, I have, this uh, 40 terabytes of plots, 43.3 terabytes or 40 TIB of plots uh, at C7. Now you can look at my space pool. I'm actually reporting 53.1 TIB. And if you look at my my, T, my TCO spreadsheet, if I go to put in my 40, 40, this is 40, you know, cause again, this pretend this is TIB because uh, you know uh, space pool reports TIB. So if I put in my 40 TIB, it's gonna tell me I, my effective capacity is 51.9 TIB. So. You can see 51.9, 53, you know, it goes, you know, everywhere from 43 uh, with the 512 partial, or sorry, 550 partials a day or 600 partials a day, whatever space pool sends, you basically get a good average every day. You don't, you know, you don't get a good average every hour or two hours. So it, it kind of fluctuates based on how many partials you're sending because the partials are totally random. These are proofs of space that the pool sends you to determine if the farmer is actually indeed storing as much data as, as they say they're storing. So uh, again, yeah, this um, this is just kind of an example of uh, how how uh, the compressed plots work. We're gonna be di digging way deeper into this as we, as we get more complex and uh, into different system builds and kind of sizing the right CPU and decompression ratios for uh, the different farmers. But you can see here, just kind of a simple test where, um, yeah, farming 40, 40, uh, TIB and space pool is reporting 53 TIB. So I'm getting 30% increased effective capacity uh, because I'm compressing my plots. So, all right. Thanks guys.